five for upcoming events. Um, and then public participation. Do we have any public participation? No, I just see no request. Thank you. Moving on to announcements. Um, staff, it looks like you guys have some announcements. Yes, I think I'm first. Okay, I'm going to give you an update on the community creations that I've read it together. Um, they have been diligently working with creative ways with the community, and they have many, many yards of funding that have put on the public library railing and fence and at the doorway. They have a lot of knitted and crocheted items to uh, wrap around trees and fencing and any other kind of furniture. And they also have approximately 100 fabric bookmarks, which we're going to clip on the grid of the fence for takeaways for the children. So it's really coming along and um, it's been extended. We're thinking May 15th will be their installation because of the snow delays. And that gives them even more time to create more. So they're excited. So there's a lot being done with the community. They're very excited. We're excited. And it's coming along very nicely. So did you say May 15th was the installation? Yeah, that's what we have tentatively. Um, okay, good. You know, it's tentatively contingent on the library. We have, we have to get the library done. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. So we were going first. Yeah. Now I'm estimating May 15th. I mean, Next month, I might be telling you it's my favorite thing, but fingers crossed, we got good weather. Yes. <laughs> and then lots of community came together and really. Oh, and I forgot to mention uh, Creative Flagstaff asked them to make uh, crochet hearts too for Art X. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Uh, and I think there's one more staff announcement. Yes. We have more images. Hey, um, on April 26th, we're going to begin installing Cuckadino Scroll. And so here's kind of an unfinished uh, cut metal piece next. And then here they uh, are in the process. What they do is sandblast it so it gets an even resting surface, something that I'm going to probably recommend to other artists because it's coming out so well. And then they do an accelerant on it, and I might see if I can seal their formula as well because it's, uh, the, the rest of it is really coming along evenly. And then next, and then you can kind of see how the glass pieces are coming together. Uh, so we are really close. Uh, it would be on a truck to the They'll be arriving on uh, April 25th, and the installation is over three days. Um, the medallions are still on track to be delivered mid-May. Um, still working with procurement on who's going to do the concrete work. And as soon as I'm hoping to have a date soon on that, and maybe we can uh, start planning the celebration here. Our wonderful Copenhagen scroll. Do we need the concrete before we get the medallions? Are they just going to set up? How does that work? Well, they, they installed uh, some, and the, right. the job wasn't. We have to tear up the sidewalk okay. and redo it. Do we have to redo the medallions to them? Yes. Oh, yes, we have to take them out. Then we actually decided to go ahead and create some bigger ones. So we're going to actually have the old set beneath the cover and exhibit. Places for, and then we have the new ones. The new ones are arriving, like I said, mid May, ready to be installed. Will the concrete people be ready to install them? We don't know yet. <laughs> so that's where we're at. I just noticed we're not using the owl. Oh, yes. and that's because we don't have our super administrator here. Okay. Um, and well, we don't have anyone online either. Right. right. So we don't have anyone online today. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. The rest of the staff hasn't been trained on the owl yet. Okay. <laughs> we did have IT come by to actually try to help us out with it, but it's, yeah, it's actually on Craig's computer and stuff. We just figured if it was okay, keep it simple this time. We'll explore and expand our mediums. Yeah, certainly this works. Great. 
Thank you. So, Commissioner announcements. The March minutes. March starts. The March minutes. Is that before the announcements? Oh, yes. Good call. Thank you. So, let's finish announcements and we'll go back to the minutes. Is that okay? Could it be possible to add one staff announcement? Yes. Um, I actually received notification today that the uh, monuments that we had uh, going in along the old Route 66, so at the end where Route 66 enters town uh, up by the mall, and then where it joins 89, um, at substantial completion. So final inspections are next week, but those are basically nice. completed. Uh, as you probably know, there was some winter delays, like almost every project, uh, yeah. but they did manage yeah. to get them done. And I actually think they look great. Take pictures next week. Uh, <laughs> you know, I just get so excited. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Sure. Thank you. So, then any commissioner announcements? I just wanted to make a quick shout out to Claire Johnson for stepping it up at the Viola Awards. I missed a stage call, and she was there to represent the BPAC, the City of Flagstaff, in just the most beautiful way possible. So, um, and thanks to Craig for seeing, you know, for seeing any problems and making sure that everybody was covered. Yeah, tell us how it was, just yeah. a little it bit was, more. It was, uh, the event was amazing. You're really starting to see, like, uh, you know, I guess from the first of my oldest to, to now, um, the amount of funding that we'll be able to appropriate into there is really shining through in the projects. Nice. Thank you. I just want to send out, make an announcement as well. Just a reminder that the symposium is coming up because of a lot of art projects that need uh, reviewers. So if you can make it on Friday, April 28th, please sign up to review and give um, our students some feedback on their projects. Where is that at? Yes, signed up. Yes. you've got edu slash symposium. You can find the information. <laughs> Any other announcements from commissioners? Hearing none, we need to go back to what I missed previously. Uh, the approval of March minutes. Has everybody had a chance to review the minutes of the March 13th meeting? Any questions, comments, or discussion? <laughs> it's been moved and seconded to approve the uh, draft minutes of the March 13th BPAC meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? The motion carries and the minutes are approved as submitted. Thank you, folks. Um, now we move action items. So. Oh. All right, so um, we are now going to be listening to um, our grant applicants. And um, I just want to remind everyone that um, grant, grant applicants will have uh, four minutes or less to present. And then commissioners, um, you will have four minutes to ask questions. And as a reminder, um, Susan will be keeping time, strict time. and we can grant extra time to discuss, um, but we just need to vote on that. <coughs> and so without further ado. So are we oh. voting on each application immediately after? No. no. Okay. Like, like in previous ones, we will save the voting until the end of okay. the presentation. Okay, good. Um, and so first is um, Flagstaff Leadership Program will be presenting. And unfortunately, our remote is not working. So just, I will be forwarding your slides, but just say next, and I'm going to forward them for you. Should we present from here? Or no. We can actually it says, uh, sorry, we didn't announce this. It says present. No. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. See at the head of the table. <laughs> this is timer set now. <laughs> <laughs> Go. Um, just want to do a quick intro over the Flagstaff Leadership Program. We are about 25 people who get together once a month, explore Flagstaff. Um, we went through an entire process of being interviewed, selected, and we are representing various groups and 
uh, occupations and jobs, and we have a graduate project that we have to do. It's a required project to graduate from FLP. And Kylie, you want to take it? Sure, yeah. So I threatened to come back. <laughs> and this is actually my very first in person BPAC meeting, believe it or not, starting right when COVID started. So, anyway, um, so Puente de Hojo, uh, they have a garden out front which is publicly accessible. And um, I'm going to go ahead and click through. What it is, is it's a publicly accessible garden area that has been completely neglected for years. And we have managed to come up with a coalition of just incredible participants um, to help install an ethnobotanically correct garden that feeds the Diné and the Latinx programs here. It's a trilingual school. Um, the Diné program in particular is a cultural preservation program and is a very important one in our public schools here in Flagstaff. And so one of the most important things is that we have a, a broad group of people participating. And so this is Alison Baki. She's the art teacher of Puente de Hojo. Um, she also has quite a bit of landscape background um, and she is our in-school champion, but is also the champion of incorporating all of the other teaching programs. We do have the buy-in from FUSD operations, Justin Dinardi, and also from the school principal, Mark Fulton. So you can see here all of our active partnerships, and we've actually already cleaned the garden out, but that didn't cost any money. So um, that was just a lot of labor on our part. <laughs> so uh, school district, the Arboretum will be supplying our plants. We've worked with them to help identify a list and then also worked with a local ethnobotanist whose actual expertise is working with indigenous uh, tribes in Arizona and New Mexico. He's currently contracted with the Hickoria Apache but also as a parent of a Puente student in first grade. I'm sure that uh, Allison knows Ian really well <laughs> and uh, is absolutely thrilled to get this expertise to this program. So we'll keep going. There's also tarot birds, neighbors, everything, and I'm just gonna move fast. So we've already cleaned up. We need to plant next. There is a timeline limit to this. We have to have it in ground before the end of the FLP program this year. So. We do have a pretty tight timeline for approval and we're hoping we answer your questions tonight. So the aftercare and management, Allison and I are the champions on that. We also have volunteers from FLP to help get us through to the monsoon. Um, but also all of the plants that are going in are Xeric. They are native for the most part. There are a couple of non-natives that were selected for very specific reasons. Um, and on the recommendation of the Arboretum and the Aftermath is Sean O'Meara, who is also the brother of the director of the ARB. Nate. So, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> now we can keep going. Uh, this is our plant list. We have 140 plants that we've selected um, and we've run through this list. Um, we did remove a plant from this list uh, from our original application uh, due to the sap not being great for kids' eyes. Um, but then we substituted a couple more plants that we felt were important to the Diné program in particular. Um, in particular, the three leaf sage, the three leaf sumac. Um, those plants. And so, and then next. So, our budget we're looking for $2,000 for the plants. We're looking for 500 for some gardening tools to keep with the program. Uh, just general gardening things, mulch, compost. Uh, the watering system actually is going to be great because we did identify an active host bed right next to the garden. So, we have an even better watering system than we thought. Um, and so, we're looking for $3,300 for MEPAC to make this uh, interface with. Thank you so much. So questions. Do you have a picture of exactly where the plants are going? Right in? there. Oh. <laughs> if you look at the bottom, that's kind of the ground level. So it's mainly those terraced areas. So we're going to break it up. Like we lost a teacher to COVID. So we're going to dedicate a Native American part to Miss Sosi, the three sisters. We have a ponderosa. So we're breaking it up into different divisions of plants and species. There'll be a Mount Eldon garden, for example, with a lot of our really local species and appropriate species for the Sunnyside area and the upper Greenmont area. So my concern, and I expressed this to Carla earlier, um, but I think it's important for everyone to hear the plan, is that I love these school gardens, but they happen when the kids are not at school. And so um, how do you, like, how do you keep it going during the 
we have summer and is there a derogation system? It will not be on RIP. Uh, that is not an option for this, which is one of the reasons why it's really important to use the main and Zurich. Um, but there is a watering plan, and we, there's also a champion, which is really important. Um, we've actually had some great conversations, in particular with Sean Mira, the ethnobotanist, um, about making it a three-season garden. He is he has built a lot of student gardens in Arizona. This is something he's run into quite a bit. He's going to help us to create those zones in partnership, obviously, with Allison. Um, but Allison has plans to incorporate the garden and decorating the garden and planning the garden into her art programs. So there's support planning. There's also some other things. And then also a lot of the activities in terms of basket making, um, some medicine making things, stuff like that, some basic ethnobotanical applications can happen after the garden is, is no longer in season. Our goal is to make a three season garden, um, which is really best you can hope for depending upon the spring, <laughs> as we all know. So, and we've also planned the garden to fit um, their snowpack builds so that we're not putting anything that could potentially break um, or be, you know, compressed under snow mode and not recover um, away from those areas that we've got. We've got those issues with that swim right now. I really appreciate um, the partnerships as usual. Um, I also think that this is a really well thought out plan and I like the army that you brought to it. You know, so it's <laughs> <laughs> um, my question I guess is for staff. It has to do with uh, the timeliness of the funding. It seems like these folks have their they're in the three point position. They're ready to start the race. Um, if they were to get funded. Yes, if it were to be approved tonight, uh, this is not something that requires a contract. A check could be cut normally within two weeks. I think we could, with um, our uh, super administrator, probably speed that up. Okay, I think that does that fit to your guys' timeline. And we have we have some minor accommodations if there's a little bit of. Back and forth. So, and um, I I was thinking of uh, other you know possible opportunities like to connect with sustainability. I was thinking of grain barrels and things like that. And I'm not sure if you guys thought that through it at all. We have and part of it is making sure that the runoff isn't contaminated from any of like the tar on the roof and whatnot. So that's one thing. Once we get into working with the actual building, then we have to start working with FUSD. And right now we're just we're trying to keep that separate from the building, if that makes sense. But that is our future vision, is using, uh, collecting all the water, because you should see the amount of bicycles that come off of Puente. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think our Thursday class is sustainability, so yeah. we'll be able to go discuss that with them. Can you have a question? Um, I'm just curious about, you said you have clients, neighbors, and parents. Um, can, you also, can you talk about what you did to get them on board and what the involvement of students will be and such and such. Yeah, excuse me, before I, you answer, maybe I interject and just say we're at time. Oh, she would like to vote for to extend the time to finish the questions. We have to vote to give. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Can we vote for two minutes? I take a motion. I'll vote. Second. Four, Four minutes. Okay. Four. So we're voting. I move, then I have to remove for four extra minutes. I'll, I'll second it. Thank you. All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? So I'll go with the uh, student teacher perspective because we also applied and received a grant to CCSEA, which is through the county, and that is specifically for K through three conceptualizing mathematics and science through gardening. So I already have a group of teachers that are going to be taking summer trainings to then how to integrate our school garden into the future and how to have that, them their buy in. And then eventually we want to move to also we have a courtyard, but right now we're just focusing on the front part. But we have other areas that we want to then pursue to continue uh, providing this education to the students So make it hands on. The question was about parent buy in though, right? Well, it was and students. So I did the student part. <laughs> so, so we've had personal one-on-one -on -one conversations with across the street neighbors. Um, I am one of them. So <laughs> I know everybody. The conversation was easy. But yeah. <laughs> well, I did bring ice cream. <laughs> um, 
it just so happens that our ethnobotanist is one of the neighbors. Also, the former um, head of botany at uh, the Arboretum is a neighbor. Uh, the across the street neighbors, head of IT for NAH. Um, this is a very huge neighborhood. And one of the things that we have really struggled with as a neighborhood, and I think you guys heard this from me before, is that there's little to no beautification on 4th Street. And this is our hope and our opportunity to make beauty roll downhill. So we're going to start here. We're going to roll it through that roundabout, and we're just going to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of energy behind that. There is an anchor down in the gateway. Yes, there is an anchor. There is an anchor. But we're going to have to, we're going to make it happen in turn. So um, there's just a ton of opportunity on Fourth Street, and I think a little energy put into the community there would be incredibly appreciated. So we actually thought a lot about just even how to find plants that will grow up and over that wall so that the flowers spill over into the neighborhood. Um, but it is entirely publicly accessible, but we want people to see it when you drive past. Great. Thank you. Hey, thank you so much for your thank time. Thank you, guys. It's just so nice to see everyone. Yes. Okay. Would you prefer that we go? Or no. Okay. We can stay. You're free to leave. You are free to leave. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I meant. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So our next presenter is Candice Lyons. And she will be uh, presenting on the um, African American Youth Lifestyle Apparel Project. Hello, good afternoon. Um, I'm Candace, as she said, and I'm uh, coordinating this mural on the South Side uh, celebrating the African American community in Flagstaff. Um, the mural would go up, you can see that is the alley between uh, South Peru and South San Francisco. It's the back of Palmer and Africa building, which faces this cottage. If you know where, um, what is that? Hot dog place used to be called. Like, but also, it's down that alley. Um, Primos, where it used to be Primos hot dogs or Northern Arizona Yoga Center, it's through there. Um, it's very visible to the public. There's a lot of people that park because it's free parking and walk through. And now that um, there's Evans Fish and Chips, you can outdoor seating there. So you have a lot of people out in that area. Um, the mural is going to feature uh, different individuals in the Flagstaff like community have contributed to uh, Flagstaff. <laughs> That being um, Charles Clemens, one of them, who is Dom Clemens. If anyone's familiar with Dom, who used to live here, his father and some of Pearl Evans' family, and then some historical photos. And then it's sort of, it's still kind of happening because um, the artist is Chip Thomas with Kildoy, um, and they both do the paste applications. So their process is to interview individuals and get their story. They're still currently working. So, some of these photos in there will be used, some of them are placeholders. Um, and it's about 800 square feet. They'll start it the first week of September, it'll take about a week to complete. And we've been working with Murdoch Center, Live Black Experience, um, Dr. Guthrie from NAU. So we've been reaching out, we've been working on this probably eight months. Um, i trying to think of anything else that I need to say. Uh, yeah, so, you know, a uh, wheat paste is an interesting process because it doesn't age, but it's supposed to. So part of the process of his art and, and Killjoy's art is this organic process kind of representing the cycle of life. So it will start to age over time. If anyone's aware of the mural we did by um, John Rennie's building up the side, that's about four years old. It's a great shape. So this is a south facing wall. Um, however, that is part of it. It becomes almost more abstract and even more beautiful as it ages. So, uh, I think that's everything I wanted to say. Good. <laughs> I have a question. So I, 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 we got these ahead of time, and I did spend some time looking at them. And I was just curious about, um, you know, with the list of supplies. I don't know. It seemed like it was. Could it be like a giant decoupage sort of project? Like what? Are... Yeah. 
So, and, and thank you for saying that because in the grant, I said uh, 5,500 for GoFundMe. It is, we did decide on 6,500 for GoFundMe because at the time when another artist, like Killjoy, she was in the Philippines, we're having a problem connecting with the time difference on that. But um, it is, it's his own photography. In most cases, there's going to be some historical photos. It is printed out and he uses a wheat paste method to put it up. Okay. Yeah. Huge, huge prints. Yeah. He's just blocks, so yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. And how long do you think it does last? Yeah. Um, well, the one on the side of John Ronnie's building is about four years old. It looks good. I mean, it's visible, it's nice. But, you know, again, if you've been on the reservation and seen his work, you know, some of it is in full sun, it looks fantastic. Some of it's faded a little, but it's all still beautiful. And this would be the only mural he has on the south side. And it's really important because the south side is changing a lot, and we're going to lose the history of the south side. I think it's an important mural for that reason, too. So. I'm just wondering, is there some kind of application that could be used to protect it? You're not. Okay, so if you do a varnish on it, it'll start to turn yellow. So the the weed case actually is quite magnificent. It's pretty strong and sturdy. It's just it be like it's like low environmental impact as well. Um, and he's been doing this for years. So I trust him on this 100%. Everything he touches is. No, I, I, I trust him. No, yeah, but I had the same question. Yeah, I wonder too, was there something we could put over it that would, but from what I researched and talked to him, it wouldn't do any justice to it. Can you really paste it? Well, you can, you know, you can possibly do it. But remember, temporary is perfectly acceptable to fund through BIA grants. No, I know that. I'm yes. just, it is a, you know, it's a beautiful piece. Yeah. Um, and it is a historic significance. Yeah. And so, yeah. I'm just wondering if there should be money set aside for additional. Um, as you said, BIA grants can't be used for maintenance in general and upkeep, but um, with important murals, we have funded, the tech has funded outside of that, uh, including are we doing one on the Murdoch Center? And we just want to get separately outside of the BIA grants for valid deterioration. So that is a possibility. I would also say that we usually don't do that. We usually make it up to the public application. Yes. So it's put here to make sure that it stays maintained and helpful. And at times, the amount is spent to help when that person is no longer around or um, we can't find them. But it's usually, yeah. Yeah. And this will age right. and it's supposed to, too. So when I tried to be clear about the grant to know that it is part of the thing too. It might actually have a nice age with the it old does. photos. It might. Yeah. 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 I have seen some of them out on the ads, and it, they some have aged very poorly. I mean, they really aged. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're no longer really visible. Yeah. 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 So it's a, yeah. it's a concern sure. depending on yeah. what we all want to invest in. Right. Any other questions? I have a question yeah. regarding the GoFundMe. Do you guys have a history or any proven track record of like making this stuff happen? Uh, GoFundMe has tripped me out a little bit, mm -hmm. unless there's like a history of good GoFundMe account. I have never done a GoFundMe, but I have to tell you, I'm pretty uh, confident having Chip Thomas behind this um, that it will be fine, that we'll be able to reach that goal. And Killjoy, she's well known to part of the chain group design. So. That's my only apprehension, and it seems it seems that in the past this has been cured by having uh, alternative partnerships. Um, I get I get it though. You're at the entry level and figuring out the grant process. Yeah. So thank you and welcome. Yeah. Um, that's the only thing that I have. Maybe yeah. Commissioner Garcia, you know, obviously having a BIA grant sometimes helps the GoFundMe process. Thank you. Uh, I also I want to just uh, uh, point out that the. Um, the parts that I love about this proposal is the highlighting of the culture and historical attributes of the city. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. That's time. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Jenna, how many of these can we fund? We don't have a problem funding them. Remember, you increased the BIA grant. Hey, our next presenter is Joel Geis of Red Frog Designs, and he will be presenting on his application, Cosmic Race Panalula on Sheep's Crossing Trail. Hello, everyone. Um, I don't know how many of you guys know, I'll give you the brief rundown. If you don't know, the tunnel over on Sheep's Crossing Trail that heads into, goes under the highway and heads into Fort Tuttle was recently named the Cosmic Ray Tunnel. Um, I just met these people, the, uh, friends of Ray and his widow and stuff, because I was doing a mural on the side of the Flag Tea Factory, which is where I work every day. And Teo came up to me and gave me the whole rundown of history and said this thing is about to happen. And I kind of got brought in and I was at the council meeting when they did the, the naming. Anyway, so I've been the artist that's been like brought along to then go into the next stage, which is they want to decorate. Now, it's a 300 foot tunnel. That's too much to do for the, the 4500. But the, the basic idea that we have come up with, a good way to kickstart it would be to do the wings. The, uh, the tunnel, there's a long tunnel, and on either side, uh, sticking out into the sunlight are these triangle shaped wings. So those could be done for uh, the amount that we have. These, um, I have some packets you can pass around if you'd like. For any of you that haven't seen any of these pictures, these were pictures that we um, got from the email. Did you all just run through? So you know, these were uh, some preliminary designs I did for one side. This is my updated design for that side. So just as you're looking, because um, based on the feedback I have gotten, what people liked, what people didn't like, what they wanted to add. On this side, we're sticking mostly with the sheep concept. Um, people wanted to definitely not cover that up, not make it all about ready. It's sheep crossing trail, and they wanted to bring the idea of the indigenous Basque sheep herders that have been around a long time. So that's what we're focusing with on this side, and I have it also knocked up on that wall. These are some of the previous ideas for the other side. It's the small side, um, based on what people like and like. Uh, sticking with mostly focused on Ray, maybe adding a sheep or two to bring in that. This is it knocked up on the wall. Um, those ones. They're the same ones. And then the idea, so the, the bigger picture that I'll try to give you real briefly, that's my idea. Um, Teo just let me loose, his friends, you know, so this is just me at this point. But I would like to see, and this, I, this has just been an idea of mine for a while, is public mural space, or at least growing mural space. Not that it's necessarily public at all times for anyone to do what they want with, but that it doesn't have to be a mural that then stays forever. I, as an artist, I love the opinion that all art is sand art. You're supposed to paint over things, redo things. And one of the questions with these things, especially a 300 foot tunnel underground, is how do you preserve it forever? The answer is you don't. You don't. It's already got ice damage. It's got water damage from the paint job they have. So you can't keep it up forever. And so I, like I said, my big picture idea for the city would be to have this be a space that's more of a rotating art space. You could you could team with the college and have 10 foot sections with 30 students, you know, doing a competition or something, or, you know, there's, uh, Reno does like a, a mural competition where they bring people from all over the world for, you know, sections of space. And you can do these kind of things periodically, you know, and you don't like it, it gets painted over uh, soon after. That's the other thing about this side, the short side, which is the, as, as the design goes, the ray side, if this tunnel gets expanded, that side will probably get destroyed anyway. So that's kind of already got to be in the thought process of this, of this tunnel as it's growing. So I recognize as an artist, this won't stay forever. Um, that's that's the, the broad scope. Uh, and the last thing, just I would put a, some sort of line, a horizon line to connect the two, which is sort of dedication for Will be Art in the middle of the canal, which is through the wings. <laughs> So have the designs, um, 
had the designs already been selected, was it going to be the sheep on one side and then the bicycle on the other? Is that like a for sure thing or not necessarily? Well, like I said, I'm just the artist who's been brought along. So I've been at all the discussions and that is the distillment from my perspective. But there's been no like sitting in as far as it just based on everything that people have put out and liked and didn't like and wanted and didn't want. That's my understanding. I had a question about the, one of the photographs um, had uh, a cyclist. It was uh, like a silhouette. It was it was all dark, but he had like points and angles like coming out of him. Yeah, I, I thought that was. Can we not pull it in up from like scent mail? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I also wanted to ask you. You seem like a, a bit moved. Yeah, yeah. Towards on the cosmic gray side, a little bit on or went from the. I mean, some of the more humorous keep on bicycles. Is that because of the feedback that you've received? It has been. Um, I miss it as well. I wouldn't call these uh, updated designs final because there are things that I wanted to add. I still wanted a more humorous sheep element tying in the two. Um, and, and coming out of the other side, I think it would be nice to have a little bit of overlap. It's not like you'd have to end in a hard line. You know, it would be fun to have a little bit of the sheep going in and a little bit of the sheep coming out. That would be a good connection. So what was your answer for the guy with the angles? Um, Spikes? That was one of the previous ones. Yeah. What was your question? Just you like that one. Uh, I was just curious about what all the spikes were. Oh, it was uh, honestly just doing some photo bashing and coming up with stuff in Photoshop and that happened and I thought it was okay. kind of cool. I didn't know if it was significant. I do like the idea of, of uh, yeah. yeah, that one yeah. with all the spikes. Yeah, they were sort of motion lines that ended up getting kind of strangely uh, angled and I just left them. <laughs> <laughs> I just finished watching Game of Thrones, and so to me, it was very much like Spears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the main th the, and like I said, I wouldn't call these final. The main thing I do like about this updated one is, you know, people wanting to pull in that cosmic idea and the fact that he's passed and a lot of things. I like the idea of him being this night silhouette on the daytime background. That would be my main addition to the designs that have been liked. The tunnel was going to be uh, redone with the city in the hospital. What right. is the status? Yeah, I'm actually not aware of that. I've only heard that that's possible. Yeah, I'm aware it's possible. We don't know. Um, as, as you know, this this project came last March, right? And um, they didn't really have an idea exactly. You know what they wanted to do, and so um, we decided to defer and um, also get the renaming of the tunnel done. And it is the cosmic gray and the search, you know, the shooter tunnel. That's a really long title, and so that was kind of a, a necessary first step, I think. And then the idea that also came out was let's let's do the sheep and the cosmic gray so that. Uh, because that was the concern at city council or the community um, forum questionnaire about renaming the tunnel. Just make sure you do keep a little bit of historic sheep herders crossing. And so obviously that was communicated to the artist. Yeah. And, and bookending it with two distinct, you know, gray on one side, sheep on the other, which you know, if it happened, you know, that artists were able to finish something to start and end with because that would be a fun transition to see it go one to the other, you know, being a herd of sheep into a herd of bicycles into, you know. <laughs> I, I'm very happy to see these designs, but I am concerned about the status of that tunnel. Um, because of the, what will happen to the gift of the hospital. <coughs> right. And, and then change, you know, again, temporary is okay. So <laughs> a lot of time, and we need to either pull. Um, I, I mean, I don't. We can I'm just like to find out if there's any way to get more material on But I know that the hospital is a sort of process, so it's going to be difficult to be part of the department. But we can see if the government is also 
I'd like to motion for more time. One more minute. Two more, if you would. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Um, so quickly, I just wanted to uh, so let you know that if you have a dream or a vision for any space that um, preferably city owned, uh, but other nonprofit space as well, you can talk to staff about um, having more adding more proposals to our future agenda. Okay. Um, so just uh, give it them. I think that's the appropriate way to do it. We need we need vision. <laughs> The art that you showed us was absolutely beautiful. I'm having trouble wrapping my brain around which piece of art goes where in the tunnel. Right, so there's um, there's two ends, and I have the uh, sort of mock-ups. There's a long end, it's a very long triangle, and then there's, um, so that would be this yeah, my most is. updated of that right. side. So, so and then a, there's a short end. There's two yeah. ends of the tunnel. Yeah. We're talking about yeah. wing walls at the end of the tunnel. There's a longer one, and then there's a shorter one. So one end has a longer wing wall, and the other end has a shorter wing wall. So he's he's done a, doing a proposal for two ends of the time. Two. So one so it's the bicyclist and the sheep. This is the one that's no. the most recent. This is, this that's is, the most this recent. Is the but most that one. that image, and then yes. the bicycle image. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah, and all you know, uh, ignorant on how these kinds of things do eventually get like locked in, decided on art. So that's why I'm throwing a lot of options at you, and what based on what I have heard, where I would go, but yeah, I, I don't know where it goes from there. Um, yeah, can you give it a comment? Thank you. I, I do have a comment. And Anthony, we've had this conversation before about having um, a mural wall and with, with various artists coming in and yeah. doing, so I think I really want us to say, I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Um, especially that space we work seems to be doing pretty well. I think so. Yeah, it's the third time the conversation has come up since 2017, and we just haven't had anybody to drive at home. And that's fine. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. Did anyone else want to print off that can read? We have it in the now. Yeah, great. So yeah, I've seen the one, one that's actually the final one. Do we have the updated? Just the images that it's presented here today. I, don't I think they were all included, weren't they? I, I no, remember saying. I don't think the, uh, the ones you brought tonight okay. are. Did you, can we keep the, the final ones? Yeah. Or, you keep well, or, the, or the, the direction that you're going now. Thank you, Joy. I really appreciate it. Let's see if we can get those scanned in. Actually, we have a sorry, Margaret, we have Vanessa next. Sorry about that. She should be online. Hi. So, so, Vanessa, Vanessa, you're. Me, me. Can you hear me or connections bad? Um, give me one second. Can you guys hear me okay? Are you yes. saying that yes. my connection is bad? Just turn the camera off. Turn the camera off. There we go. Okay. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Um, mine's quick and short and sweet. Um, just proposing to re landscape. Um, we own the Juice Pub in, um, and so we're on the corner of San Francisco and Birch. Um, last year, you guys allowed us to do that small garden area. Um, kind of right on the corner where the stoplight is. And we are proposing this year to do the parking lot corner. Um, currently right now, it is like an unlandscaped kind of wild area. It gets a little crazy in the summer with like grass and some pokey stuff. Um, 
but we want to be able to put some pavers down and make it a more um, accessible and um, beautiful area. Uh, it's currently being used often by people's animals and also people as a bathroom. And so the biggest thing that we really want to do is just kind of deter that and make it so that it is a public space that people can come and enjoy. You know, we get a lot of people across from the, the courtyard, um, you know, that come and have a, a juice or a coffee with us and to be able to enjoy that public space across the way from us would be really great and beneficial. Um, we're really trying to get that corner where we and Eno and Hops are at, you know, as a more desirable place and even a place that, you know, a lot of people don't go past the whole Heritage Square. And so if we can keep improving that corner, we hope that people will keep coming to see the, you know, historic courthouse, but then to, um, to our businesses and the businesses that are around us and beyond us even too. So that's kind of our proposal. I have Warner's um, set up to do the project. They did the rock wall, you know, well-known local business, that kind of thing. Um, we will keep up with the maintenance of it and whatnot. So same as the butterfly garden that we did last year. Quite an echo, and then just unmute when. When you're ready to respond, I apologize for any inconvenience. Thank you. So uh, my question is for the commission, how do we feel about this being a public space when it's not necessarily a public space, even though I use it every time I go to the juicery for sure, and I park my bike right there, and I would love to have that there, but how do we feel as this being a public space? It's legally the public to be accessible, um, which is what um, our definition is under the um, you know, the BIA grant. Okay. So mm -hmm. the fact that it's not fenced off and closed off and it is accessible um, 20, you know, 24 7, uh, it is a, you know, in that sense, it's a public space. It is. It really space. is. Yeah. Just like the, just like actually the little pollinator garden on sure. the corner. Sure. It's, sure. it's not really different. I know, obviously, they're kind of putting seating and I can see the, you know, potential issue with is it just for, the seating just for the juice pub, I think that, you know, versus the pavers and the landscaping, which is, right. you know, so I did, I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't really re review in detail. Uh, are, is, are they asking to pay for the tables or are they just asking to pay for the pavers and the, and the landscaping? And that might, you know, it, it's allowed under the policy as far as um, I know of our review with Google, but, you know, we have um, some questions about what's included as far as the seating, um, but it, it's the but shrubs anybody and the from the public mulch. can sit on the stretches. Um, they can come over from the courthouse and just sit there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> The proposal is just for the pavers and there's a couple plants going in. Um, there's currently some wooden um, picnic tables there that are not ours essentially and would continue to stay there and whatnot. So it, it very much is like not like just the juice pub space. It's for sure used by hops it's used by eno i know that lots of people you know come and sit and yeah ride their bike down and sit there so the proposal that i have like from warners is specifically just for the pavers but there's picnic tables currently there that we would you know once it was paved put those back we've even talked about putting some actual like metal nice picnic tables there that would be more weatherproof and would last longer than the the wooden ones that are currently there. So, so who actually owns the property? If you don't know, 
question. Uh, Ron Boyer is who owns it. Thank you. And would it be available for anyone to use? Yeah, it's very public space right now. Like, like she was saying, you know, it's not, there's no gate, there's no um, closure access. Um, it's, you know, right in the middle of the parking lot, which is a public parking lot that's not, you know, you don't have to pay to park there and that kind of thing. So as of right now, it is very public and would continue to be very public. Um, there's no way really to like block it off to make it private in any way. So like I said, right now, we honestly clean up a lot of poop is what we do. And we're really hoping to like put the pavers in and that would deter that whole idea that it's a bathroom for anybody. But you, you don't foresee putting up a sign that says it's limited to your customers. No, not at all. We have a we have a little patio out in front of us that would be that's where our customers are. Lots of people from the juice pub go and sit there, you know, and have their food or coffee or whatever they're drinking. But no, it is 100 percent a public space um, per our lease and everything, too. We cannot claim it as any one of our businesses. And I have to interject. Um, we're at time right now. So if you'd like to continue the discussion. We'll need to vote. Okay. Um, I would like to turn my minutes. All in favor say aye. 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 Um, I'm wondering what the protocol is when it's only by. So you're you're renting that property, and it's there's a there's a. Have you uh, asked? Have you appealed to the owner to um to upgrade the area? No, uh, yeah, we're currently leasing the, the property um, because it's a shared space. Um, yeah, we don't, you know, I'm not going to pay for it myself in that sense. Um, we last year when I did that corner garden, I was advised to like that we could reapply for the beautification grant for that corner pot spot. So I wanted to see that before we attempted Um our landlord tends to be very hands off. And so the likelihood of him paving something like that is pretty slim. It does provide value to him. So often when we've done something like this before, I don't know if this is actually in policy anymore. What we've done traditionally is require a license that says don't contain it and um, allow access so that somebody can't, as soon as her lease is up, just fence it off and benefit from those dollars. We've done that in the past. Uh, King's Mural is an example. Um, so there are ways if, if people like the commission instructed it, probably for best practices for staff. Um, we just want to make sure that we can maintain that right of entry uh, or they can pay us back. I have a question. Um, so we funded something else here. Forgive me, last year was a rough year for me. I forget. Um, how does everybody feel about the maintenance of that? Does anybody know what we funded there? Or we funded the pollinator garden on the corner. Okay, and I'm not familiar with that space. Does anybody know how that's been kept up, or is, are we happy with it? Been another, that we've been through a second season. Right, right. It, it, it was kept up through the first season, and of course it's just the winter. So right now, of course, it's not, it's not blooming yet again. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're we happy? Yeah. Yeah. So I saw it last fall. Yes. Yes. We're at the end. Okay. Um, I'm just going to ask a question in my mind. Uh, um, do you have the, I mean, do you have the landlord's permission to do this? I just want to make sure. Yes, we do. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. I appreciate your consideration. Thank you, Vanessa. Next up, we have uh, Margaret Morrison. She'll be presenting um, on her application 19 Westdale Avenue utility boxes. And I'm going to pull up your application as well, Margaret, just in case commissioners have any questions. All right. So much to beautify in our town. <laughs> I can't believe how diverse the application 
Um, I know it's getting close to five. Um, mine is pretty uncomplicated. It's just a box. <laughs> but um, she said, my name is Margaret Morrison. I've been a life staff resident for over 40 years. And I wanted to thank the commission for allowing me to uh, submit an application for the Beautification Arts and Science Program. As stated on the application, the utility boxes are located in a super highly visible intersection of Dale and Beaver. So I'm sure we all drive down Dale and Beaver several times a week. Um, it's in front of a 12 unit condo, condominium, and adjacent to it is the historical Nativity Church. So just an FYI, if we're considered for the project, I'll be working with um, phase three of the artwork that was people on phase three um, of the artwork that was not selected in the last phase because of the historical component to this um, corner. I want to make sure we're compliant with the appropriate. Um, my personal interest for this project was piqued when I began seeing the impressive local artwork on the traffic boxes around Flagstaff, and I love how it has promoted, promoted a tremendous amount of curiosity and conversation. Not necessarily that people like all the artwork, but I love the fact that there's conversation. And my focus then is threefold through this process. First is the community appreciation for the transformation of the blank boxes. Flagstaff residents like seeing the positive, interesting, really often impressive work. Secondly, Flagstaff, um, Flagstaff artistically diverse population has a unique opportunity to display and exhibit their local artwork, which I really love, not just in um, the artist galleries around town, but so visible on those boxes. And thirdly, it's kind of personal, the blank boxes are located directly outside of my unit. So <laughs> what happens, and I just have to say that, what happens is several times a year, um, and I'm not going to say how many, I have to call the maintenance man of HOA property to come and repaint uh, the graffiti uh, off the boxes. So I would really like to try and curb the occasional tagging and vandalism that happens. Um, so Northern Arizona Science has committed to measure this month, and I'm working with the Beautification Arts and Science Program to select an artist from their list of phase three, as I mentioned, traffic signal cabinets. Pardon me? Right. Oh, oh, okay. sorry. And um, anyway, I think there were so many wonderful things that you sent, Kristen. I know that we could select something from already submitted. I wanted to thank Jenna and Kristen for your expertise in the application process. Um, yeah. So we, uh, just to clarify, for the traffic signal campus phase three, all the applications that, you know, we have before the five different selection panels, um, we sent over all the ones not, we didn't get awarded um, to uh, the country association to consider. And I'll also share with them the ones that got the highest scores. Um, from I'll share the scoring of the different selection panels so that they can narrow down and either use a proposal or contact an artist to create a, a, a new one um, that they settle on. And I know that they want to bring in the church and they want to take into account, you know, the area. But they'll kind of use our process as kind of the first level of vetting. And, and then they'll choose from probably the highest scoring uh, groups from each of the use of the traffic signal applications. Thank you for that clarification. As you can see in the second photograph, there are approximately five boxes, but the one in the first photograph is the one that faces Beaver Street, and that's the one I'm most concerned about. Um, APS has been by and they have stated that they, all the boxes belong to them and yes, we're good to go with the line of that. And just to add to um, Margaret's presentation, we have received written approval from APS. For all five? No, no. Just this for one. It's, it's for huge. One. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, very visible. It's bigger than our traffic signal. Yes. Yes. 
And then as we segue to into the, the Q&A, I just also want to say, um, Margaret's application um, excludes a budget, and that is because um, she is patiently waiting for NOAS to, to go in, to the site and measure the boxes. But um, as you know, beautification arts and sciences, we have lots of experience with utility boxes and the wrapping of them. Um, and we can confidently say that this would absolutely be within that $4,500 budget for a BIA grant. How does the, uh, not, not to take anything away from you, Margaret, I'm so happy that you're here today, but sometimes we have to bring up questions just to air them out amongst the commission. And I was thinking of just, how does the commission feel about uh, funding traffic so that it goes to BIA? In other words, maybe finding a loophole to like game the system ish. It feels kind of strange to me. I've been sitting here working through it, and I'm not sure that, that I'm against it, but it does feel like and running around an existing program. Like we voted on those other ones, approved them, yeah. and, and we had folks groups and we had people volunteering yeah. their time. And then they did not get selected. And then now it's just we hand all those off and I'll pick one pick any one of these. I want to understand the concern because I know that when we first instituted the traffic signal cabinet, the goal was that it would catch on yeah. and that yeah. people would apply yeah. the IA grants for other cabinets yeah. outside. That's, that's why I said I'm working through it and I'm not sure I'm against it, but it does feel yeah, strange it? when we all, a lot of us were on those focus groups and spent a lot of time on that. And those ones are not selected, and now they one of them is just going to pop up as this selected. It feels a little strange. Time, we want to do it again. Yeah. Do we want four minutes? Four more minutes? Move for four minutes. Yeah. I guess Second. Awesome. We need a vote, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> for all in favor? Aye. 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 So I, in some ways, um, you know, I'm scared the, the one we asked you to tell me is going to just be one that's going that way. Um, right. So I'm just saying that, um, you know, this, I encourage, I'll just tell you a step, I encourage Margaret to use our process. We said you shared the scores with them, but didn't say they had to go by no, I haven't scores. I haven't shared. But you said you were going to. Yes. So say then that one of the ones that got 20 points or average 20 points, there were some with 60 and they say, oh, no, we like this one with 20 would seem to be just go against what we had worked on. That's, that's, what, I'm, that's what I had. The design selection is your issue. Yes. But, um, we asked for a BIA basically to come back with the design for approval from the commission, so yes. we do that, right? Yeah. And this is a good way to use up old art, too. You can get a provisional permit and ask us to bring the actual select design back. No, I, I just think this is a great way to use up that um, the art that was going to be put on a shelf for Donoy. I walk by those cabinets in your front door almost all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but I would like to see what the art was before we finally approved it. So I, I wanted to and I'm highly sensitive, I'm sorry, to the fact that we do have that historical building on the end. Of, I just think it's appropriate to really take that into consideration. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay. Anything else, folks? We still have more time? Yeah, a little under two minutes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. So um, our next, I'm actually presenting for our next grant applicant, um, Coral Evans, Market of Dreams Community Mural Project. Coral was not able to present this evening. Um, with that said, I do want to state up front that um, you will not be voting on this project this evening. It is actually um, it is ineligible because it resides within um, a private business. However, um, 
we thought it important to present this project to you. If EPAC feels strongly, then we encourage you um, to ask for this particular project to be put on a future agenda. So, um, and I know all of you, um, you know, received this application um, in your packet. Um, I had the opportunity to um, speak with the grant applicant last week. We had a wonderful conversation about this community mural um, that the Market of Dreams would um, like to install within their building. They have recently um, uh, transformed this new space that they've received. It's five times larger than their original space, and it comes with 900 square feet of blank wall space. So what they would like to do is put out a call to artists in May. They will be opening hopefully in June. Put out a call to artists in May um, and really mobilize not only artists, but their community members. And they would like to divide this blank wall into 15 separate spaces. Um, and each of the artists and or community members will be in charge of one of these slices on the wall. There, of course, are um, areas where these different murals or the artworks will intersect. And so the artists and community members will have to work together to um, select the artwork that will kind of go on, um, that will combine these areas um, of the mural. So it is truly um, a community experience. And this particular community mural will be located um, in a section um, that is open to the public, community section from 10 a.m. to 7 or 8 p.m., Tuesday through Saturday and on occasion Sunday. Um, and of course it will be accessible as well um, during um, meeting, community meetings, um, community, you should say yes does, all sorts of public events. Um, and so that is the uh, Market of Dreams Community Mural Project. I think it's important to, um, to have like a little bit of a conversation around this only because we're starting to see uh, like this is truly a community space. It's driven by like micro grants that is helping out people in business and other things, unlike the juicery thing. Um, and but yet we can't fund it on uh, in this in this light. So um, do we at this point uh, after the conversation is concerned, do I make a recommendation now to put it on a future agenda item or do we do it during a future agenda? Yeah, item? Yeah. You know, obviously we sought legal advice uh, you know, from the legal department. This is not publicly accessible because it closes. I think right. it's just a, a definition. But no, um, just in the point where you know at the you know, end of our agenda where you request your agenda items, that would be the proper look, you know, point to ask for this to be a future agenda item. Um, we want to, you know, we, I think we have to have a management policy discussion uh, to bring back to you. Um, there's conversations that have to be had. I think it's great. It's like a great, you know, there's so much community support and micro grants and everything that you're you know, talking about, um, there might be reasons to do this outside of BIA grants. So we want to have that management discussion first. We didn't really have enough time uh, to do that. So we just, at the very end, we always request for two agenda items. Um, that is the proper space to request it. Thank you. Anything else, folks, before we move on? All right, thank you. So our next presenter is um, Mark Fox from the Boys and Girls Club of Flagstaff, and he will be presenting on his application, Improvements to the Boys and Girls Clubs of Flagstaff. Do I sit, stand? Super cold in here. <laughs> right on. Uh, so my name is Mark Cox. I'm the CEO of the Boys and Girls Club. have been there for the last 10 years, so when we opened, um, I started working there. Uh, if you haven't been to Cogdill or have been to that rec center in a while um, or just are not familiar with it, it's just a brown box with no windows. Just plain and simple. 
A uh, few years ago, we were blessed to uh, to apply for a, a BPAC grant to get a mural for the, the outside of the building, adding a little bit of color. You can kind of see it there in the left picture. It's got, uh, it's, a, it's a children's book uh, illustration and the muralist that came in, um, he was painting murals all over the state of Arizona and we got chosen to be one of those, um, just add, adding a splash of color to, to the neighborhood. And if you guys are familiar with rented homes in general, it's not very colorful. Right. It's it's very camouflage. I don't know. Well, I have my own personal reasons why it might be camouflage, but uh, we want to, to change uh, our entrance way. Uh, you see that that bush there. It's it's basically a trap of you know squirrels, skunks, trash, uh, basically a death trap. Uh, and so we want to get rid of that thing, pull it out of there, and then put in some beautiful gardens, put in some colors. Um, you guys know the importance of. of the art and spaces, it enlivens and, and, and enriches a neighborhood and it makes people feel welcome. And of course, the things that we want to put there are, are blue, you know, blue evokes like a, a sense of calmness and security and trust uh, and, you know, just adding color to that area. And we've, we've done a beautiful job in renovating the indoor space at the Boys and Girls Club, but now we're, you know, we want to add color to the outside. Um, because it's the same brown color throughout the whole neighborhood, right? Um, and and this is this is it, right? We, we want to just put more seating areas. We see about 600 kids uh, per year just on a regular weekday, Monday through Friday, and then on Saturday and Sunday we actually partner with a, a program called Unlock Potential. It's a basketball program, and they see about 300 or 400 students just on a weekend. They've got everything booked from morning to night, from games, you know, in the morning. My kid's part of the league, so he goes, we go all the time, and there's no seating available uh, once you get there. So everybody's just parked in their cars, just waiting for their game to start. Um, but yeah, you know, it, I, I'd want to, to create an inviting space for folks to, to sit down and enjoy that space. Questions, comments, concerns? Comments? The only question that I have is the budget says 4950. Are we good on that? Staff? Yeah, so we just we, we did a price comparison on that and just broke it all down just to get like fresh new stuff because uh, we've had those things that were there. They're not even anchored to the ground. Honestly, you can move the benches, the bike rack. Um, and they're just all they've been there since I started working there 10 years ago. I like your budget, Mark. I was just wondering if that. Great. They, oh, it's $4,500 is the maximum that uh, we can fund. Yeah. And so, um, it, it, could you identify, you know, an item or, um, you know, a, a change? Yeah. Because the ability to can't. take out more landscaping fees, like it's all in house, right? So the parks does a, a, a good job of taking care of. Of our facilities and if we were ever to put in anything it doesn't cost us a dime so you know we, we can subtract all those things out uh reducing some of the costs of like uh planter or some of the the flowers because we have seeds and we have starters that we can do in-house and, and uh, start there as opposed to buying something fresh from farmers i had a question about so you mentioned the entryway and the bush um and then you've got a bunch of furniture here so where was the furniture going so if you scroll back up, oh, that's not us. <laughs> so on the other, yeah. Uh, so where that bench is, that's leaned up against the wall. There's there's a picnic bench there as well, and behind the picnic bench. Uh, so they moved the picnic bench butt up against the bike rack, so no one can actually park their bike rack there. Um, so it'll go there, and then the planters will actually go where that bush is. Okay. And then there will be seating there available. Okay, so to the left of the door and then to the yep. right of the door. So you're sort of beautifying the entryway. Correct. Okay. Correct. Is it possible to avoid the shipping costs of the prepackaged costs? We can buy that. I. Not I know. Something that's expensive. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, We could also we could also look at the like the local uh, artists that that create bike racks out of you know just art pieces. Um, that would be, be an option. I don't know what one of those costs, but it's, it's an idea. 
like the beautiful stuff that you see downtown, you know, the bikes that are actually bike racks. That's pretty cool, but I, this is all shipped in. Sorry. I actually think that's a great idea on any of those things. Otherwise, you would end up getting into the industrial hub mm -hmm. to it, which is an improvement given the fact that we don't have any of that right now. But uh, to, to really do it in the more unique way, it could be even better. Right. So, local touch, local artist. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments, folks? Cool. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mark. Appreciate you. Crazy. <laughs> All right, back down the stairs. Oh, steps to take here. So our final presenter is um, Liz Mark, you want? from Flagstaff Downtown Business Alliance. Um, and Flagstaff Downtown Business Alliance was provisionally approved last year to wrap one of um, the utility boxes in the road. Thank you, the road alley. Um, and so she is back this evening to discuss um, the final artwork for this. Thanks, Kristen. Um, I, I know Vanessa had some trouble with connection with her camera on. Is it okay if I leave my camera off? Yes. Okay, perfect. So y'all provisionally approved the, approved the proposal to wrap the, we're calling it the LaRue Alley um, utility box. It's adjoining the back of the Hopi building um, in the alley off of LaRue across from the Uptown Pub House patio. Um, we did a call for artists and then put together a panel to review the works um, on that slide you see there is the work that was, it was actually in the top three for the panel, but it was the artwork approved by the building and box owners. Um, so it is the artist's interpretation of, of relating to Flagstaff, it's crows, the Hopi building, some street signs, and then each of the birds is holding um, an item related to the street signs. And then there's a little more information on the next slide, Kristen, if you wanna scroll. So the, the artist is Dana Kamberg, who um, is actually affiliated with downtown in a lot of ways. Um, there's a, a little blurb there I'll let you read, I don't need to read it to you, about why she chose this design um, and what it means to her. And then I, I did want to note that Dana was uh, nominated as a Viola um, finalist. So she is known in the art community in Flagstaff. Um, there's a breakdown of who the panel consisted of. Um, we tried to hit a variety of people with interests in the project, as well as sort of the art scene in Flagstaff in general. Um, yeah, so that is the, the work of art. I, th I think I, I touched last time on process, why we wanted to do this as far as beautifying the alley. Um, it's a major thoroughfare of having people walk through. A lot of eyes um, go through that alley and that box is, is not pretty. So we're, we're pretty excited to have something interesting that ties to the community to, to show people. This was a provisional approval pending. This is like a good process. Yeah, right. And I also will remind you that Dana Camber is the um, uh, speaker and butler um, travel signal panel in the black number days. There's a photo of the box, is there? Um, there is not in this presentation. Okay. I Liz, I have, I have your, um, I went back and incorporated your original presentation. Oh, perfect. Then yes, there is a photo of the box. <laughs> yeah, with the location and stuff. I remember correctly. I was confused about the um, aspen trees in the old presentation. Oh, because we were going to do a call for artists, that was just a rendering of potential okay. could look like with art on it. Gotcha. Yeah, they mocked up the box in the email attachment with the aspen trees. That's what you're talking about, right? Yes, yes, yes. I, I would have done the same with this art, but our staff member who has that ability 
left us. <laughs> no problem. I did note that Dana um, was one of the few that submitted both a front and side rendering for the art, which was interesting. My usual complaint, and this has, uh, it's not, it's not the presenter's fault or anything like that. Anybody who knows me knows that I just complain about this every time it shows up, is having an art piece of the wall of the building that's just behind the art piece. Uh, stuff like that I don't like to see, but that's a personal taste. I love the birds. So any other questions or comments while we're doing this up? once it loads for you for your discussion. Okay. Thank you, Liz. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. So did we Yeah, yeah. it's time for your brothers. So I just have a quick uh, I don't know if this is what Anthony was referring to or what you were referring to, but the um, Ron Boyer with regard to the juice pub and then Macker and the back thing, like I'm all about beautifying these spaces. Absolutely, I didn't have a problem. But I was just really curious about like the owners of these spaces kicking in some money to help with the costs, right? I mean, is that a concern to anybody? Yes. Like it would be really nice if if it was at least a partnership or collaboration, I mean, I'm, I'm fine if we kick in the lion's share of the cost of the project, but, you know, Nackert saying, oh yeah, I'll let you beautify my building. Um, and then, you know, Ron Boyer, I don't even know if the application had a letter from him. I assume we would have to get some sort of support for the owner of that property to beautify the space, but I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah, and Michael, in my opinion, you know, from what I've seen, we just get different levels of applicants and like the, the golden ones do bring those other partnerships. And then there's some that think that the partnership is just by providing the building and the space. Right. And it's like, it's, it's, it's been hard for me in the past to digest that as well. Um, so I, I understand your concern. What are we gonna do both for one by one? Yes. So the first one, I guess, are we ready to vote? Yeah. The first one is. Do we get that more discussions as we come one by one? Yeah. Okay. The first one is the Puente de Hojo Community Garden. Yes. <laughs> so no discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Can I hear a second? Second. <laughs> okay. So all in favor. Well, who moved? Chris moved. Chris was the first motion. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so that one's passed. <laughs> Thank you, Carla. It's a great Thank you, Carla. Great presentation. The next one is the celebrating African Americans as black staff. That was a macro building, right? With the uh, wheat paste. Any discussions? Um, so. I'm still on the whole GoFundMe thing. It just doesn't feel like they have all their pieces together. I hate to push away artists, though. How much did they um, want to raise? 6,500. 6,500 GoFundMe. Um, it would be impressive if it happened, but if it doesn't happen, then what? Yeah. Thanks, Ron. The application said it would be 5,500 or it might go up, and she said tonight that it went up to 6,500. Plus the money. So so there's there's a couple of different moving pieces. So obviously, GoFundMe's go better if they already have a grant buy-in. 
right? So it's a chicken and egg. Yeah, it's, it's also, normally, I mean, so if people are ready to go, we usually can give them 90% of the grant money, but we don't have to give them that much up front. We can you know, say that it's approved and only give them a certain portion of the grant money now and wait until they come, um, you know, get their the funding money yeah. and then you the rest of them. And if they don't get it. Money. And we, we've had really good luck. I, um, I remember correctly from Liza and all the history of BIA grants, we have maybe had one person take money and then have to ask for money back. That's There's the budget right there. They don't complete, we can't, but the go budget is 65. Or we don't send it. Oh, right. We don't, have, we don't have the funds. We don't have to. We could give them, you know, 25 percent up front until they get the go fund me money or nothing. Right. Uh, I was going to say, you can, approve, you can right. approve it. Yes. Right. But a provisional approval that says you got the whole thing as soon as your GoFundMe succeeds, yeah. and that gives them leverage to actually succeed. Yeah. Right. Right. But they have the approval in hand. And yes. That, and that helps get the. That's right. It's not a provisional approval. It would be a direction to staff. I'm not sure I follow the distinction, but but okay. As long as they can go, look, we got 4,500 coming from feedback. As soon as we hit our goal, that's good fundraising leverage. Yeah, so we'll improve it, but you won't release it until they just they get the 6,500 for the artist. So it's a contingent plan. Uh, right. It's a contingent versus a provision. Right. What, what power do we have as far as the question of the or drawing something in? Is that just go through the whole funding? Anything. Um, and is that can, another piece yeah. that we can do? You, you can always ask, you know, you could also, so a couple of things come to mind when we're talking about that. One is we could certainly ask for a license to the building that says that they can't cover it up or take it off or do anything damaging for a period of years, just add an extra layer. But we have done that in the past. Um, Where have we done that? I mean, the King's House we, mural, the one murals? just down here on 66. Okay. When we did that one, we told them that because it was the first time we did a private business, we had a lot of struggles. As a group of that, and we said that they had to recently license and people could kick in money as well. But they also just had to agree that they would pay it back a proportionate amount if they took it down um, or damaged it in that period of time. So within a certain time. I'm just curious because since I've been on, we've done the we have the East surplus patrol, we didn't ask for that. Um, so we since I've been on, we haven't asked for that. So I'm, that's why I'm asking you have we in the past. Yeah, no, we definitely have. Um, Years we've not been as detailed that way, or we chose not to go down that road. But if it's something of concern, which I'm sensitive it is, I know it certainly uh, makes sense to do as well. And uh, we have at times of, I don't know if we've actually said we'll give it to you if someone if you want to consent for uh, That would be even a different thing. But you could ask them for a match. I mean, if Nacker, yeah. if we put in 4,500 and Nacker put in 4,500. And the GoFundMe would just be two thousand dollars short. But then we're we're micromanaging a BIA grant that's supposed to be very expensive. Yeah, no, I mean and, it would just be and nice they if they are said that. Coming up with a matching, yeah, you know, funding a the funding point. source. There is a fund matching component. I also see your point as well. Um, but listening to what the presenter had in the intent of the art, like I feel like she was just searching for a canvas, was as happy as making that the partnership that we actually got a wall to put this on. That's why I'm saying there's such a thin line between like, you know, their intent and like what we, our expectations. In this situation, I feel like it was her intent that that was a partnership that she, like they, she accomplished something by getting that right platform. I would like to see a standard policy that, so that anytime it's a private building, there is that, um, coverage for the city that there's a contractual obligation. Oh, the license. Um, because so, I do think, um, yeah, you want some assurance that they're going to treat that investment with respect. I would ask them that you request that because we did just change the policy guidelines that we had about a year ago. Um, and, you know, we are about a year now. I think they were out 
the new policy guidelines were out last May, and I know there was a lot of back and forth into those policy changes. Um, but as if that's the, you know, what uh, was kind of relief. And that's what I'm thinking. I think it, it, I don't know if it was actually a requirement. I just have to go back. That's why I would like to have a fuller discussion about making something. Um, and, you know, because we have just approved, but then uh, uh, last year was the first time the policy guidelines went in. Of course, I think the main thing was we were increasing the funding from 2250 up to 4500 and we were allowing the money for artist fees, and now we were changing it to temporary. And I do think that the impulse at that point was to make it easier for people to apply. Um, so now I'm not objecting. I just would like it to be a fuller policy. It's not the policy we require these business licenses. I think it is a case by case, you know, basis. But I think that if we want to make the policy, I think we should just have it as a larger discussion and um, as a full policy. And so you're saying, saying it's it's not put it in the guidelines. Policy. It's not in the guidelines. So it's not in the guidelines now. Are you opposed to it? It sounds like you're opposed to it. I want to think about it. <laughs> I'm not opposed to it. I just want to think about it um, because I know that there was this big push to make this more accessible, to get more grants out there and more community work done. And um, just getting permission from the owners is sometimes a lift for, the, <laughs> for community members and artists to get. And so then if we're requiring a business license agreement, it could be a heavier lift. There might, to me, it might be a case by case basis that you might want to consider. Um, it is interesting to me on the one hand that holiday regarded is pretty easy. When you're doing somebody's landscaping for a business seating area or redoing the back wall, I do see why this is these are different, right? Like suddenly putting in putting in landscaping and potential seating area is different. Um, and so maybe it is case by case, maybe the policy comes back. I, I know we have done it in the past, but we haven't recently. Yeah, obviously, yeah, that's the policy. Yeah, sorry. We're, we're not, on the one that we did in the past, we talked about the fins, the hotel, whatever it was. That was a bigger dollar amount, too, than what we're going to be contributing, right? I believe it was. Maybe that was the theory of why I wouldn't do it when they came out. I don't actually remember the conversation about that. Mm -hmm. Was it the theory? Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. I have been here long enough to know that <laughs> there are um times when private property owners um go ahead and do what they choose to do and then say and now you can slap me out my hand and um i don't know if you all remember but the um destroying this set of trees oh and they the whole part of the world. that's right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it happens and i do think we need to have I mean, like it's a problem. Yeah, yeah, it is a risk. I mean, this is the whole reason the Aspen niche dollar amount went down is because Century Lane did not agree um, to, you know, replace it. We're still doing that project, but we've said it not as much into it, right? And I guess that's the question: is do you want this for a forty-five hundred dollar grant? Because it's, you know, yes, the private business owner can do it, but do you want it? At this dollar level, and 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 that I'm just saying that that was the thinking last year. We just changed them, and, and if we want to change them back, I just want us to like fully fully consider it. So I think it's they need to put it on the agenda here. Right. I mean, I I thought my memory my memory of the conversation last year was really to um, to provide the artists with. I do think on um, this question about buildings that uh, the owner is benefiting a great deal, I think. And that there needs to be a commitment from them, I think, to protect the, um, the artists who are both. So the licensing uh, is a future agenda item? Is that what you're, okay. And then, so what do we, is there a motion on the table to approve this one? I, I have another question on the same project. 
we talked about the permanency of the project. Um, and I realize that these grants, they don't have to be permanent, but but you can do art like this that is semi-permanent. Do we, do we not aspire to that? Right. There are different materials you could use to achieve the same purpose. Um, you might aspire to it, you might not. I, I think that's a case-by-case -case basis. And I, you know, this grantee put forth a proposal of a specific material that the artist obviously prefers to work with. And the artist, um, you know, thinks of natural aging as part of his art. So I think it's a case by case basis. Um, some artists would be like, oh, please recommend to me a more permanent material. Please, please, please help, you know, in, in that. And, and this seemed a very specific proposal to use a very specific art process. So there's been a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, I'll look at the The motion is to approve it. The motion is to approve it. No, uh, no. Yeah, no contention on having the GoFundMe. Funds. I have to ask the Commissioner Garcia to leave the motion. Is that part of your motion or do you want to amend your motion? Um, yeah, I would like to amend it to say all those things. I didn't realize I was having to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and also, um, this, this is like the discussion. Okay, I would amend the motion to include um, that the uh, GoFundMe be fully funded before we contribute our part. And also, um, to respect Santa's wishes about the property owners. Can we so contingent on both? So what I mean, would we want the is this Tyson's agreement with the property owner? Yes, he needs to come. I think we have to okay. agree that right, right now until we make that decision. Okay, that's fine. Never mind. Just for the with the first one. Thank and you. That's for, the policy is on the books now. Um is it so I just want to clarify so the motion is to uh, approve and have the money distributed contingent on the GoFundMe fundraising. Right. The full 65. The full 65. Do you still second? Yes. Okay. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Great. The motion carries. Um, the third one is the Cosmic Rays Tunnel of Love on Sheep's Crossing Trail. I vote to fund. Motion to fund. Any seconds? Before we can't we can. get contingent on the final artwork? Maybe? <laughs> yeah. Bottom of the motion is a place for discussion. So as, a, as part of renaming process under the Transportation Commission and people, I mean, it came up that people were really adamant that we respect the, the Basque sheep herder history. Um, so whatever approval here, I mean, I like the project, but one to somehow like the, the, that that he showed. And so it's, if it's like what Tina was saying, it's contingent on approving the artwork. But like, I love the rainbow sheep. That was super cool. But I think based on what we've heard repeatedly and loudly from the community, um, that looking more that second one. Well, this is, yeah, this is his, uh, like presented as his direction now. Right. It felt like his direction now, but that it could change. Right. Right. Okay. I withdraw my motion if somebody else wants to motion with a contingency. Uh, can I still ask for some clarification on what's happening with this tunnel then? You think it's going to be destroyed? I haven't heard anything about it getting. Yeah. yeah. Well, NAH is uh, going to be doing their thing over there pretty soon, and the whole world's going to change. So, why would they destroy the tunnel? I haven't heard about it. Yeah, I've heard you going under the change. So, yeah, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I haven't heard about this tunnel in specific. I haven't heard it specifically referenced, and I, that's all I know. Yeah. <laughs> I remember Martin telling you that there was going to be a change by Madison. Um, 
you guys been working with us on this project and kind of bringing this home from kind of doing this connect with Cosmic Ray and Juan since last year and getting the renaming done. And um, he mentioned the work and he um, he did not mention that it would affect these wing walls. So I yeah, I just don't have that information. It was at the it was at the council meeting with the presentation that someone and that's why I well, the artist said something about it getting destroyed, unfortunately getting destroyed too. But I you that I think you looked over and I was like, I don't know. Was he saying that or just that inside if the the three hundred foot wall ever became a mural space that was just naturally already being damaged by water or drain yeah. and drain and stuff. That's what I had heard say that that may have been. But he also said art's not supposed to last forever. He was one of the ones who said that too. Wasn't that in, in context yes. of that 300 feet where we'd have yeah. to get right. those murals right. inside the tunnel if they ever got painted would be damaged just naturally by right. drainage. And so they would have to get redone every couple of years was what I what I heard when he said that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, and, and if he, that and if that could be for this idea that Later, the well, in that context, I mean, Nah is not going to be there for a little while, so it could just be a temporary installation. I mean, like you got five years. Oh. But certainly, as far as what the final artwork is, we we can do it just you know um, a conditional approval. Like we approve the project, but we'd like to see the final artwork and when when it's ready. Okay. Yeah, so Anthony permission. withdrew, or do you want to? Anybody else? So I make a motion to approve provisionally, contingently, whatever <laughs> we're I'm not sure what we're supposed to say anymore, uh, based on approval of the final art. Second. 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 Before we vote, get the, the art that he, those final two pieces of art that he showed us, I got the impression that that was. The art du jour, uh, and, and that it may or may not be the final one. But, but can I say, and I don't want to be, I'm going to be slightly critical, I'll try to be constructive. He didn't seem organized, um, and that gives me concern. I know that he's working with Cosmic Ray and all the groups. So he had these first ideas, and he obviously vetted with them. And he took their feedback and then he changed it since he first submitted, you know, to this based on the feedback that he received. And he received that as much as some people like the whimsical, on the one side they wanted the more traditional. And, and then he, which is a kind of how an artist works, they take the feedback. The art's there and, so and then he, you know, but he said he wasn't, I think this is where I heard he wasn't quite finished. He, he did want some sheep. And on this site too, he just had to work out how he wanted to do it. But he is obviously working with a focus group in a way of the, of the people behind Cosmic Ray and Martin and, and the people who are concerned with the sheep herd. So he is responding to them and 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 obviously making considerations. Is there any business side to this of like he needs to be concerned or be fought finding out if he can put this in these certain places? I mean, do we need to be worried? Like, yeah. I think he's invested in the art, but is that is all of that? We need to worry about that piece of it. My understanding is that he has been at this this location has been very by the person by the person who presented today. No, by uh, Teo. He's not. Yeah, and, 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 this uh, location. They just friend and the widow. Okay. To the they presented last year for this location. But they did not, an artist, not with that. And the widow, if I recall, was adamant that they did not use a portrait of Cosmic Gray himself. She did not want that. She didn't want Cosmic painted on the wall. No. She did not. She did not. And that was kind of the original idea of everything. So it's very strange. <laughs> Chris, I hear your apprehension. Uh, I what I see here is an artist who is good at art, filling his way through a process, and hopefully through this process he'll learn to be good at grants. 
Well, the other thing is, is he said he was pulled in just sort of at the last minute. He was painting, uh, painting a mural at Flag T, I think, and, and he said that somebody saw him and asked him to sort of do the work. So, I mean, that's what he does as far as rather than that. The other thing is just a general reminder, we don't all have to agree on this, right? These don't have to be unanimous votes. So we already have a motion with a contingent and we have a second. Are we ready to vote or is there more discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Opposed. Anyone abstain? Thank you. Um, the next one is the parking lot improvement um, at the Juice Pub. So, question for Anthony since he parks his bike there. Just make sure I'm thinking of the right spot. Yeah. Is it? It's in the parking lot. It's behind that concrete wall. Yeah, it, it budgets to the concrete wall and it has uh, in San Francisco. Yeah. There's two uh, wooden tables there now. And um, from my experiences, they do not uh, discriminate on who sits there. Because I usually have my lunch with the random, you know, folks of the area. Out in that spot. <laughs> you got a budget for that one. <laughs> this one I would like to put on hold table until we have a clarification on the policy. Um, uh, licensing? Licensing, or I can wear it. I don't know, maybe this is a different policy. <laughs> um, I mean, no, this could be the same like it would be the same thing, right? Where the business where the property owner says they're not going to do anything or they're going to maintain it. Is that where you're getting at? No, they're going to close it off. Let's just say, uh, they can, you know, the juice pub is no longer a last city and they, I don't know, they gate, they gate that part off. It's no longer publicly accessible and therefore lost uh, the investment. That's the, um, and, and so this is one where you could say it, it would be contingent on getting a business license agreement that if uh, they shut it off from public access within the next five years, they have to pay the city back. Why could a five year? Well, yeah, for some limit. Limit. A business license agreement has to have a limit. <laughs> I mean, they would tell me it has to be back. If I was the owner, I would then argue that. Well, each year it should diminish. Right, but each year it should diminish because I would agree. That's a year is 20%. Yeah, right. That's so, what I would say. So, right. So, right. So that's usually how they're written. Thank you. They're like within three years, it's a certain percent. Within five years, it's, you know, and then by 10 years out, it's, you know, 10 percent. That's pretty much how they go. And, and, and you can give staff discretion to write that, you know, write that language or negotiate that, that year and that percentage. Good question for staff. How many yeah, we grants are we funding uh, in the two cycles? We have funding enough to do, you know, about 12 grants a year. And, you know, last time I think we approved four. four. So that's why I said at the beginning that we have funding to fund everybody who's going to access well per year. Right. Right. Now we in the fiscal year started once in September we did four. So we would have over eight more. There's seven on the table. And if uh the money that goes unused we can just go back into the system for more of the IRA in the future. How is that? Uh, mm -hmm. it goes back into our EFER that does not carry forward because it's not a capital project. But it's in, in a specific fund though. So it's not just BBB as a whole, it's the education. Right. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It was the beautification fund. Right. All right. Do you want to move with the license contingent? And you yeah, and then staff would figure out the license like that I mean I, I mean is it does it make any sense that the private Property owner should have to buy a certain percentage of the cost. For it. I think one could argue that. I think it's the same. So, and I 
can I admit, I, I apologize if I made, made this more complicated remembering things. Um, I think for a while we just didn't allow it to be a private business. And so we did open that up not that long ago, I think. Yeah. Um, I think the the or the orchidium side of hers is the orchidium, right? And then that was one where we that was not a VA grant, that was a capital fund. I thought it was a VA grant, no? It came in as a VA grant, but we didn't really So I, I think I may be not remembering exactly the results of changing the plan, but I apologize. I know we can do this, but obviously we're trying to encourage more canvas for our artists, more beautification. You know, you know the more complication you get, the less you may get, as Jim was saying. Um, it, it certainly feels like that would be a great policy conversation for the future. I mentioned about whether it went to private thought and you require a certain amount of contribution. That would be a commission decision, but I wouldn't want to try to. I guess I'm actually, I guess they am. Confused because I thought the IA grants in general were for publicly accessible, publicly viewable, but you couldn't, they were designed to go on to, you know, Ellen Falls and their private property and, you know, um, sprucing up, you know, landscaping, you know, corners again. I mean, obviously, those. The first two sub corners right on the corner, right? It's right on the street, it's adjacent to the site. It's very, you know, very, very, uh, you, you know, kind of public. Uh, it's not behind anything, it's, you know, right on the corner. And I thought that's actually what the IA grants were designed for. It was originally the chest mm -hmm. nonprofits, but they have had their own property. Um, of the but, but that's changed yeah. over time. So my apologies if I was. And I, I think that you're right. I've only been here for you. I, I think, know. I think, <laughs> and I think that you hit it on the head too, like with the intent. I think that you're going down the right path with that. But as soon as you give us what we want, then we're going to change it, okay? I guess my point is that it's probably out of the policy right now because it's something that you could always ask for. I don't think I would have until we had a conversation first. What are you talking about now? The licensing or the no, kicking right. right. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the hardscaping is what it's getting me on this. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, the case by case, there's that. I can see where it could get to you on what they're not on. So, this is like 95% of this is for pavers. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> and like some shrubbery. $130 worth of shrubbery. Right. I mean, I could get like. That for them, like, like that's easy to anybody could do that if they wanted to. But this and it's behind a concrete wall, it's not like it's just right there and it's easy for somebody to stop and say, Hey, look at this nice sitting area. It feels like a structural improvement more than beautification. Well, to be fair, on the walkway, it's behind the uh, iron fence. Um, but if we, I, I, I appreciate your comments so much because it inspired a thought in my head. If we look at the greater context of what we support as a commission. I mean, we're dealing with pavers on public land, but you know, uh, uh, in beautification, if we look at just that side of it, we're doing all kinds of like infrastructure capital type of things that this mirrors just on the BIA side of it with the private owner, which which actually I was a no vote until you said that. And now I'm thinking, wait, I need to look at this holistically. It's this parcel that's prime for becoming more beautiful. I mean, it's heavily trafficked, it's heavily visible, it's moderately well used, it's prime for becoming more beautiful. But I don't know if something that's largely pavers is more beautiful. Uh, pavers, yeah, I mean, pavers, we're doing paver around, we're doing doing stamped concrete to mimic pavers at Espanita, and we're calling it beautification. I think that's the two. Commissioner Garcia's point. That was also presented, like the pattern is presented as beautification, where here it's on the ground behind a wall. Right. And there it's people are going to walk on it just on the sidewalk. Right. I think I think they're very different. I think this will be an interesting book. I think this will be an interesting book. So maybe we don't have a motion or do we have? So then we don't have a motion. This until we have a policy place. About the licensing. Okay. Because we I also talked about business owners kicking in, but we're not going to. I want to add to Sandra's motion. Not only do we have the business center to take care of, but we encourage uh, the 
the, the tenant that we we like the idea of art going in there. We just want something more artistic. So if we're tabling, then we're tabling it for two different reasons, because that sounds like a contingent of uh, a, a, yeah, a approval. Yeah, but right now we're going to table it for information on the license. Let's see if the table goes through, and then if not, then we can just like add on. Yeah. Okay, so Sandra votes to table this one. Uh, I, I said, I'm trying to, do you want to table it, or do you actually want the business license agreement and make it contingent? I'm just wanting to clarify. The conversation of whether we want to make that general policy requirement or do you just want it for this project? There it goes. <laughs> because I'm very 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 clear on this. Um, whether right, we find hardscaping for a private and that's a question for a private owner. That's another question. I don't know which way that we want to move on this one. Oh, that's why I asked. Could you go to the motion? Well, does somebody want to second the motion to table it? I vote. Did you say yes? I'll second. Okay, so now we're voting on whether or not to table this one proposal until we have more information on the licensing policy. Right. Okay, all in favor say aye. I'll vote to table it. Anyone opposed? Aye. Uh, opposed. <laughs> Three. The standing wouldn't do us any good. There was a tie vote. Uh, isn't it? Because so, no. we're missing Claire, who's our seventh. Motion fails for that. Right. Uh, okay, so then I'll make another motion to approve this project with the contingency to uh, whatever Sandra said about the license. licensing thing. Yeah. And then I don't know if we can do an, a, separate, a separate contingency with Beryl on it um, about uh, it not being cool in some of our eyes. I don't, I don't know how that works. No, 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 that's no, that's, 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 that's a no vote. That's a no vote. <laughs> okay, so all right. I'm just trying to be respectful. To approve with say that we can obtain a business license. Is there a second? <laughs> the motion fails. <laughs> it happens. So now what do we do? Okay. Anybody else want to make a motion? Yeah. I, I would like to suggest, though, that we go back to that business owner if we can and say, look, there was a lot of, I don't want to put words in people's mouth, a lot of merit to this, a lot of excitement to this, and there were some things that, that just didn't add up, but we would like you to come back. So why don't we make a motion? No, no, no. Staff? No, just, just like we did with the tunnel last year, you guys did not move forward on it. Staff went back and worked with them to redo their proposal, and we can do that too. Yeah, there's a meeting. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, FYI, I have a hard stop at 6:14. We have a couple more. We have number four right now. We have meetings to traffic signal cabinets. Right. So I just suggest that we clarify and, <laughs> and, yeah. and keep moving forward. So um, um, we have the Dale Lake Avenue Utility Cabinet next. I move we approve contingent on seeing I second. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Next one is the Sunnyside Neighborhood Association. Mark and Charlie. We're not voting on it. Okay. Thank you. And then uh, Boys and Girls Club of Flagstaff Improvements. Motion to approve. A second. Any further discussion? 
Do you want to have it contingent on? Well, there's a, there has to be one contingency. It can only be $4,500. Uh, yeah, they, it has to be contingent on them resubmitting their budget. They can't want the board by Yeah, you just can't. That, that's the only. Yeah. Uh, do we want to have any other, anything other than encouragement around the design for the uh, choice of the um, furniture, <laughs> the uh, bike rack, and the trash? Um, just. And go ahead and do it as presented or any comments on that. Our staff is happy to encourage uh, you know a maybe a at least one of the elements, you know, like maybe the bike rack. Um, like if you know, but we would have encouragement. But I think it's enough for, especially for that organization, as long as there is actually some follow through uh, with some encouragement from staff, just so he'll double check. And I felt like he was really open to it. And he's, we really do want to encourage it. He's got a yeah. pretty utilitarian architecture to deal with now. So maybe we can see that, make it more interesting. Nice okay, any further discussion? And the uh, is approving contingent upon resubmitting the budget. Uh, all those in favor? Uh, uh, yeah. Opposed? Okay. Um, Oops, wait, you guys. <laughs> 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 well, yours are going to be discounted. So, yeah. Hour was getting late. <laughs> yes, the uh, the Rue Alley art installation. So you guys already gave a, a provisional approval, so now it's been just the approval of the imagery, which was the crows and the building and the sun. Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Traffic signal cabinets, phase three. Hey, hey. <laughs> Are you awake? I am. I have to <laughs> So thank you. I'm gonna wait for the one moment. Yes, no worries. Where is the finicky? Okay, yay. The last relocation. Selections. Just say next. Next. <laughs> um, just going over the scoring criteria again, you're probably all very familiar, but the first 50 points are based on originality, the quality, and merit of the proposal, and for the ability to be translated into a large format. Next. The next 50 points. 50 points is how well does this proposal complement the site and can it be enjoyed by uh, particular pedestrian traffic where it's located and how does it contribute to the cultural atmosphere where the signal is located. Next. Our first box is South Fox Glen and East Butler. It has great vehicular and pedestrian traffic. It's a very strange cabinet. It's got two side cabinets, so it's a little more complex. And it has very high visibility at the entrance of Fox Glen Park. Next. Thank you, selection panelists extraordinaire. <laughs> uh, Chair J. Michael Cruz, City of Rights and Parks Manager Sean Mullaney, and Super Citizen and Flagstaff Unified School District teacher Gabby Garcia. We appreciate your contributions. Thanks. Okay, uh, the first proposed selection is Joel Dice, The Fox and the Flowers. Um, this is considered first place. Um, so, next. So, of course, you have seen this artist before tonight. Yes. We were holding, you know, holding back that we 
Yeah, this one down very high. Uh, That's beautiful. Yeah. Don't more back there is the alternate selection, and her pros are this is an homage to the dark skies. Next, and such a fun field. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And uh, that was very well received as well. Okay, next. Questions, comments, suggested motion to approve. So moved. Second motion. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> that was easy. I need the button. Um, okay, South Dula Boulevard in Forest Meadows, one of the highly um, sought after locations. It was very interesting to me. Um, it's on the west side and it has beautiful visibility. It has vehicular and bike traffic mainly, um, and it's near a few major. Tail and kind of area. You're only saying the backside. Yeah, right. Yeah. This was the complete highest scoring selection, and I think you can see why. Um, very well thought out, very well composed. There is a little discussion about removing the words by yeah. Arizona. Um, uh, there was some direction from the panel um, to discuss that with the artist, and it will be discussed with the artist. Maybe I think we can figure that. We want to see how it plays out with traffic, whether it would be a hazard, and then there was just some aesthetic issues with it as well. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, thank you. There's two for a couple of Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, Susan, unfortunately, was ill. Um, that day and I ran the panel, so I'm, that's why I'm jumping in. <laughs> was there no discussion about the eyeballs being like? There was, um, uh, there was but it, it was also light. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Some had more trouble with it than others. <laughs> but that was considered what was unusually surreal about this piece. <laughs> I know, sorry to have missed it. Yes. <laughs> Unfortunate timing. Next. Okay, this is the proposed first alternate. I think mean, I remember Kiara's Caitlin. She won on her proposal one. This is proposal two. Um, yes, so, that's the door. Right. Thank you. And I'm starting to get tired. Can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, this is in case the first one doesn't work out, as you know. Next. And this is a proposed second alternate uh, from Chelsea Goody because they were so close to the scoring. They were within a point of each other, and yeah. there was a little bit of a miscalculation in the gap. And um, there was just a, a number that was transposed, one number that was transposed. And so we actually notified Chelsea that she was the alternate um, before we caught the error. And um, it literally, I think it was, they were two points apart. They were literally tied. Yes. Yes. So we, we was that case to prove uh, Chelsea as a second alternate. She was very honored. Yes, she was. She felt very validated as an artist for that. So questions or comments? We think that Chiara has the panel downtown and we're saying that it's a different proposal. Right. Okay. Um, I, that doesn't factor into the who is the no, second alternate. No, we, we can't repeat that proposal, but we can repeat an artist. So this is the second time we've had this discussion uh, around this ideal. Uh, is that appropriate to have them submit different ones for each one, or you know, just to kind of uh, second time we've talked about it? Do it again. We're going to have to really talk about it. Well, I've been saying in the relation or Kiara and Chelsea are both these young emerging artists too. And I wonder if at some point we want to think about category for emerging artists. We could have a 
I'm sorry for this question. Obviously, if Sean Turney doesn't go forward, but I just don't think that's going to be the reality of the matter. Right. <laughs> right. I don't. All right, folks. Any motions to approve Sean and the two alternates? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And lastly, our lovely South Beulah Boulevard in the Cottle or Lumberjack. Um, three boxes here, and it has primarily vehicular and bike traffic again. Um, and next, thank you, selection panelists, Vice Chair Sandra Lebarski, Commissioner Johnson, NAU staff member Jim Oaks. Super Citizen Daylene Soaker and Super Citizen Francine Moore. And these are the slides of the panelists on all of Beulah. Yes. Yes, on all of Beulah. They had very diverse favorites, <laughs> which kind of made it interesting. It didn't come to a consensus. Yeah, this was the one site that did not have consensus. As far as everybody chose a different first place person, yeah, every single wow. panel, uh, panelist chose a different person. But this one, this one made the highest one and, a, one and a half first place and received the most second place, so therefore, it rose to the top. Yep. So, next, and next, and here is the proposed alternate, Lonnie Kai Weiss. Next. Next. And next. And next. And here we are again. Deciding point. Right, Questions or comments? I'm voting for it, but I sure like the alternate. I do. Yeah. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a motion? Second. Yes. Oh, I don't know. Second. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, we've had motion motion. Second. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Yeah, I wish I could even show you the other one, but didn't because uh, everybody's first place had something to say. <laughs> yes, it was so diverse. It was so. Yeah. so yeah. I feel really. really yeah, and it's all the right place. Place. This is the yeah. one that was all over the place. Okay. My apologies. I need to excuse myself. Okay. All right. So yes. I'm just going to get up here. Um, I'm hoping that I have, you know, worked into that with our budget. Um, but I am going to tell you that um, just because these, you know, this is so small. So this should be the um, arts and uh, science fund. First of all, I'm going to do a little preamble. I presented um, our capital projects to council, um, basically kind of our work plan, what we're going to work on at FY24, and then what we're going to work on in the out years um, on Friday at their retreat. And our projects were very well received. They're very excited about the projects that we prioritized for FY24. And they cannot wait to see actually all the art details of the Lone Tree Overpass. I got a lot of excitement, you know, uh, you know, brought to the forefront. Um, the also, uh, I had council members pull me aside and talk to me about the individual projects. So they were very excited about what you prioritize. You know, these are kind of just the budget numbers, um, and pretty much arts and sciences has not changed at all since I saw you um, last in January with these numbers. Um, the only thing that's going to come up, I think, is the Flagstaff uh, Art Festival. Uh, I uh, had uh, Gretchen from Finance reach out to me today, and she says, is this really a capital project? And I'm like, you know, you're right. It really isn't a capital project. It should probably be moved up into the operating along with the rest of um, our you know, creative Flagstaff funding. That change may happen. So I just wanted to kind of make you aware of that. We were just question like, is this really a capital project? Um, that happened with our traffic signal cabinets, by, by the way, as well. 
they want to move that up. That's you know the infrastructure is already there. We're just wrapping it. So let's let's put it up. It's not we're going to change the funding amount. We just um, are going to move it within within the budget. So next um, to um, the beautification fund, which as you know is the um, fund that we have. Um, and this is a, a little bit hard. And go ahead and move to capital projects, <laughs> which is the next page. Oh, the next line. And this is where the changes came back. So um, since you again went over all this with you in January, hopefully some of it's fresh in your mind. Um, but the changes that happened here, um, we have gotten pushback from finance to not fund anything in FY24 that truly isn't going forward. So what they did is they just said, you know, um, I'm sorry that was like the city lawn. You know, I had some funding. <laughs> so like the city hall lawn project is one. We had fifty thousand dollars in FY24, and we had three hundred thousand in FY25. And they put the you know thumb screws to me, and they said, "Hey, are you really going to spend any of that in FY24?" And I said, "No, we are going to begin and put the team together in FY24. I can do without the fund. This helps them because as with the state, there's a maximum limit, and because won't you? you have to go in downtown Wyoming." coming on board and there's a tremendous amount of capital funding. They are putting this scrutiny to everybody. So I had a few projects like that, make some minor changes, some minor tweaks, take a few things out of FY24 and push it into FY25. But no funding amounts changed and no priorities changed. So those are the changes that I've had since January. Discussion folks. Um, thanks to staff for showing me those numbers again and again. We have to be here. Yes. <laughs> Still, I'm a little confused as to what's going on with them, but no, good job, Jim. There's no discussion, no more discussion. Is there a motion to approve the budget as is presented? I'll make a motion. Thank you. Second. Second. Thank you. Moved and seconded to approve the budgets as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Great. The motion carries. Thank you. There's no discussion items. Uh, uh, moving forward to the to and from items. Um, staff, you're up first. Um, chairs next. Just thank you for staying so late. Um, <laughs> City Council liaison. I don't have anything. I'm sorry. <laughs> no worries. Uh, thank you. So the future agenda items, the licensing discussion. Um, I'll support that. So we need to commission to support the licensing issue before it gets on the other uh, on a future agenda. Is there a second? I will second. Thank you. Uh, or I guess you're bringing it up in my supporting. It was already two, right? Or no? Um, yeah, 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 you, you know, the person who brings it up, it needs two more. Two more is oh, okay, so then we're good. Great. So the licensing um, for private businesses sort of tease that out. And then the second thing is the market of dreams. Yeah, I would like to see the market of dreams bring back the proposal that they have for a bigger discussion on future agenda items. So is that an agenda item or is that just something that staff asks them well, to do? Um, it will be, it could be a discussion item it could first and then the an action item just depending on what policy discussion is that we have with upper management. So I can't tell you right now, but we will bring it back either as a discussion or an action item. Okay. I'll support that. Likewise. Okay. Great. We have a two. 
agenda items for the future. I have a question. Actually, um, and this is in regard to the Rio project and the Bridgewrap issue. Uh, yeah, I have reached out to um, so Sandra emailed me this already, um, and and definitely supported the staff including it as a future agenda item, but it might not be until later this summer. But I have reached out to Jeremy DeGator, the Capital Improvements Project Manager, on this already. First of all, he thanks you for sending that into the Army Corps of Engineer very much. Um, he said he had some further information. We just have to move back with each other. And he'll probably come and present on the project. I just have to find what, what's the right time in the schedule. Okay. I just yeah, wanted to alert people. One of the big design issues on the thing in terms of aesthetics is um, the channel, the way the channels can live back. And there's all the different ways to live back. Some of them are pretty, um, pretty chaotic. And so I just wanted to. I'm, I'm, this is my second to the last meeting, and yeah. I just want to make sure it's on everyone's radar. Yeah, moving um, forward, I think yeah. it's really important for the impact to understand the importance of this, because without us even putting money towards it, we wouldn't even be having a conversation. If we're not driving the bus on this one, I promise you nobody else is going to. They will not. Thank you. So I. I don't know then that it will on. Is it on the agenda? Or just uh, a question. Uh, so a presentation on this capital improvements is one of the project about how to best ensure that's what I understand is the request. And um, we can just have a discussion. I don't think that's the best way to achieve that with capital improvements. Um, because they are running the project and they are and Jeremy he emailed me and he, luckily we have one of the most responsive capital senior project managers on this. Um, you know, so I feel you know really strongly about that. So um, I will make that I, I don't I don't mean to but I'm going to okay. make that a future agenda item whenever Jeremy is ready. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. The next BPAC meeting is May 8th at 4 p.m. and it is 624 in Alger. Thank you, yeah. folks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, don't ever put yourself on the screen. Yeah. There's some things for running. Yeah, Adrian. Yeah, that's so smoothly and having this. Okay, that's how you can be. Okay. Oh, right, 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 right. I did like that. Just jumping into the sides. Right.